What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. Coming to us a Hebrew Israelite man, as a Jew man, as a real one. They try to hide our identity, switch us with some fake Jews, but we the real ones. We come back on top, man. I hope y'all enjoy this video and let's get into this shit, man. Alright, cool. Today, two motherfucking day, show you outside Big Crib, man. Hey, man, say, man. This shit getting wild, man. You know what I'm saying? The Diddy case, man. You feel what I'm saying? Diddy, Diddy, Diddy. You know what I'm saying? Last time we talked about Diddy, man, Diddy exposed all the people that was friends with him during the time that all this shit was going on that they better talk. And if they don't, they gonna be going down with him. He had a whole list. Now, you can look at my old video about when we talked about Diddy. That shit was crazy. You dig what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man, like I said, man, they most definitely trying to take black success down. But it's like we can't give these niggas the ammo to take us down. You dig what I'm saying? Now, Jeffrey Epstein Island, you dig what I'm saying? Was one of the first things that everybody was talking about at first before this Diddy shit. That Jeffrey Epstein I was doing all this crazy weird ass shit on this little island with a bunch of celebrities, famous people, important people, and you know, and people in power who could control America and other civilizations and shit. You know what I'm saying? They don't do nothing, man, but try to hide the secrets and put people down. And bad luck, you know what I'm saying? With like the Jeffrey Epstein Island, they just wanted you to, to get caught up in what they was doing. It was presidents going to that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And they was trying to say they had little kids in that bitch. They was trying to say they had motherfucking all types of motherfuckers in that motherfucking um situation to where, you know, um it had to go down. You dig what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is. The only person I feel like they got caught up in that Jeffrey Epstein Island shit was the person beside Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein killed himself, you know what I'm saying? So now they're coming at Diddy. Cause Diddy was supposed to be doing the same damn thing. You know what I'm saying? So we got some videos that breaking down everything that's going down in that lawsuit. Uh, about all the people trying to put a lawsuit about, uh, against him. And you know, like I said, man, Diddy been free. So... This is the takedown of Diddy over? Or is this just the beginning? You know what I'm saying? Of some crazy ass shit that's going to happen in the in the music industry, man. Like we all know, man. We all know that it's some motherfuckers who control this shit behind scenes that's um that's that's controlling Diddy um to do like not to do it, but like you know what I'm saying, you know how you be like you you yeah you you know how you be like, man, okay, yeah, I'm in control of all this shit. But then, yeah, you can control all this shit, but then you got, you got to, like, it's somebody else, you dig know what I'm saying, that's really behind some shit, that's trying to push the shit, you know what I'm saying? So, we got some shit that's going on. I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and let's go on and get into it. Rock 
This the Diddy, this the Diddy shit, man. Hey man, say man. Diddy talk, he might put a counter lawsuit. Having speeches with man, ain't nobody speak up for this man or nothing. Image yourself after the gay pain. Big homie wanna look like a gay pain. What are we talking about? We're talking about classic. Like yeah, Jay Z, don't start a whole nigga style. Adds a layer of public intrigue and speculation to the ongoing drama surrounding Diddy and Jay Z. His knack for stirring the pot and calling attention to the conspicuous silence from Jay Z amid Diddy's legal troubles underscores the shifting alliances and uncertainties within the entertainment industry. Fifty Cent's suggestion that Jay Z might have more to hide, hinting at potential Damn, Jay -Z. legal issues. That's how I put you on chopping block. We seen that with that with shit you were dancing. Around that white bitch. We seen that shit. Activities. See what, and me go with that shit. Your life's in danger. If you know the secret, who's involved in that little secret room you got? The image of Jay-Z on a milk carton shared by 50 Cent humorously, yet pointedly, questions Jay-Z's absence and lack of public support for Diddy during a time of crisis. This act of trolling, characteristic of 50 Cent's social media persona, not only keeps the conversation alive, but also highlights the perceived abandonment by friends once troubles arise, reflecting the fickle nature of celebrity friendships and alliances. 50 Cent's pro Ain't no damn way Diddy get caught up in all the niggas who were with that nigga disappeared. what the unfolding legal situations could mean for both of their futures the silence from jay-z contrasted with the vocal curiosity and skepticism from figures like 50 cent paints a picture of an industry rife with hidden stories alliances and potential conflicts waiting to be unraveled 50 Cent's social media activity continues to spotlight the growing distance and apparent lack of support from Jay-Z towards Diddy amidst his legal troubles. His posts, filled with his typical blend of humor and provocation, point to the stark contrast between the past camaraderie shared by Diddy and Jay-Z and the current situation where Diddy seems isolated. The I'm reference to the, the lavish take down all parties and public displays of unity in celebrating black excellence underscores the deep changes in personal relationships and alliances with in the industry. Boozy's observation about the silence from Diddy's friends adds to the narrative of abandonment, suggesting a broader pattern of air weather friendships in the face of adversity. 50 Cent's speculative comments about the reason for this silence, that friends are wary due to Diddy's extensive surveillance and recording, introduce a layer of intrigue and suspicion about what those tapes might contain. The alleged seizure of evidence from Diddy's homes, including hidden camera recordings, adds a tangible... That's why I heard they raided the house over the camera recording. About the extent and nature if I was of the Diddy, alleged illegal nigga, I would have that shit on my backup backup hard drive. I ain't no damn way they would have got my shit. Or them niggas doing weird shit. Fueled by 50 cents posts and the broader media coverage. Yeah, without that, a secret account. Web of relationships, loyalties, and secrets in the music industry. Highlighting how quickly alliances can shift and how public personas can conceal deeper, sometimes darker realities. 50 cents ongoing commentary on the situation with Diddy, coupled with his past conflicts with Jay-Z, frames his interest in public statements in a context of long-standing industry rivalries and personal grievances. His eagerness to obtain the alleged tapes that Diddy supposedly has, which could contain compromising footage of various celebrities, indicates a deeper layer of curiosity and perhaps schadenfreude regarding the potential fallout from Diddy's legal troubles. The notion that Diddy's friends, including Jay-Z, are distancing themselves due to resentment Jay -Z secretly up to something weird. suggests a breakdown of trust and solidarity among these high-profile figures. This scenario aligns with the adage, there's no honor among thieves, implying that the alliances within this circle were always tenuous and self-serving. 50 Cent's focus on Jay-Z can be traced back to their competitive history in the music industry, where alliances and rivalries among top artists like 50 Cent, Jay-Z, and Diddy have shifted over time. 50 Cent's public digs at Jay-Z, highlighting a perceived ego and lack of originality, reveal the complex dynamics and competitive spirit that often underlie relationships in the entertainment world. These developments point to a broader narrative of ambition, rivalry, and secrecy that defines much of the industry's backstage dealings. With the unfolding drama around Diddy's legal situation bringing these elements into the public eye. As the story continues to evolve, the intersections of personal history, professional rivalry, and legal jeopardy are creating a compelling saga that captivates both fans and insiders alike. The 
relationship dynamics between 50 Cent, Jay-Z, and Diddy reflect a complex web of alliances, rivalries, and shared history within the music industry. While 50 Cent's animosity toward Jay-Z is well documented, the long-standing friendship between Jay-Z and Diddy has been a point of public interest and speculation, especially in light of recent events. Diddy's public displays of affection and respect for Jay-Z, including prominent mentions and tributes, underscore their close bond. However, the noticeable shift in Jay-Z's behavior following the legal troubles and controversies surrounding Diddy, particularly after Cassie's lawsuit, has raised eyebrows. Hey man, Jay-Z's once Cassidy get that lawsuit, he and Diddy would usually be come, seen together, and the coming. cancellation of the Rock Nation party. Fuel speculation about and his desire to like distance himself from Diddy's legal and public relations issues. This perceived distancing coincides with suggestions from figures like 50 Cent and Jaguar Wright that Jay-Z, while maintaining a cleaner public image, may harbor secrets or be involved in activities as serious as those Diddy is Ooh, accused of. Who fucking knows? I heard Beyonce done guilt from that situation. misconduct in the upper echelons of the music industry. With Jay-Z's cautious public appearances and strategic silence adding to the mystery of his involvement or knowledge of these matters. The narrative that Jay-Z possesses darker secrets, yet manages to he does. Na- if you've been getting scam texts like these, navigate the industry more discreetly than Diddy paints a picture of a savvy operator aware of the stakes and the importance of maintaining a controlled public image. As the situation unfolds, the interplay between public perception, personal history, and potential legal entanglements continues to captivate and provoke discussion among fans and industry observers alike. Jaguar writes allegations against Jay-Z linking him to R. Kelly and highlighting a purportedly dark history add to the growing discourse about the hidden dynamics within the music industry. Her claims suggest a pattern of questionable relationships and decisions by Jay-Z, particularly in the context of his associations with Aaliyah and R. Kelly which have been sources of controversy and speculation. Dame Dash is recounting a feeling betrayed by Jay-Z's pursuit of Aaliyah, combined with R. Kelly's alleged misdeeds. Man, so much shit about the Aaliyah shit is personal and professional entanglements. Jay-Z's collaboration with R. Kelly, despite public awareness of Kelly's troubling behavior, raises questions about his judgment and the ethical considerations of such partnerships. The support for Diddy from R. Kelly, a controversial figure himself, further complicates the narrative. Kelly's defense of Diddy, suggesting a conspiracy conspiratorial targeting by the system was met with skepticism and ridicule reflecting the public's difficulty in separating the artists from their alleged actions the silence from jay-z amidst these unfolding events contrasted with r kelly's vocal support from prison deepens the mystery of jay-z's stance and his relationship with diddy this situation underscores the nuanced and often contradictory nature diddy. of celebrity hey diddy is on the run where support ain't no part like the diddy party head ass are constantly being reassessed in the court of public opinion 50 cents trolling of jay-z and diddy using social media to highlight their silence and absence during diddy's legal troubles underscores the intricate and often contentious relationships within the music industry his interest in the tapes seized from diddy's home suggests a belief that they might contain incriminating evidence potentially implicating jay-z and others in illicit activities the allegations by jaguar wright about diddy possessing tapes of jay-z and beyonce add a sensational element to the narrative suggesting a level of complicity and shared secrets among these industry titans. Diddy's history of close associations with Jay-Z and Beyonce lends some plausibility to these claims, at least in the court of public opinion. The mention of Diddy potentially using collected footage as leverage aligns with the broader theme of power dynamics and manipulation in the entertainment world. His alleged comments about leveraging his relationship with figures like T.D. Jakes to improve his public image further illustrate the strategic and sometimes desperate measures taken by those in the spotlight to maintain their stature and influence. The ongoing federal investigation, as reported by sources like NBC News, indicates the seriousness of the allegations against Diddy, with multiple individuals reportedly cooperating with authorities. The inclusion of high-profile executives in the legal complaints, such as the former CEO of Motown Records, Ethiopia Habtamarium, suggests that the scope of the investigation and the potential fallout could extend well beyond Diddy, impacting a broader network of industry figures. This unfolding scenario paints a picture of an entertainment industry rife with hidden agendas, strategic alliances, and a precarious balance of power and reputation, where public personas often mask complex private realities. The allegations against Diddy and his sons are severe, implicating them in criminal yeah, activities they, they, they involving underage individuals and drugs. Ethiopia has proactive happened? steps to legally and publicly
publicly separate herself from Diddy, and the accusations suggest a widespread desire among industry figures to distance themselves from the unfolding scandal. Hop to Miriam's detailed denial of her presence at the supposed events at Diddy's homes, except for a formal occasion, indicates the seriousness hey, hey, with which she is uh, taking the Barack? allegations okay. and her eagerness to clear her name. This scenario, where individuals implicated or associated with Diddy are beginning to cooperate with authorities or issue denials, reflects the growing pressure and legal risks surrounding the case. The speculation that Jay-Z might be seeking to preemptively protect himself from similar scrutiny points to a broader pattern of concern within the industry about the potential ripple effects of Diddy's legal troubles. The suggestion that Jay-Z could be the next high-profile figure to face exposure adds to the atmosphere of suspicion and anticipation. The discourse around these events, fueled by commentary from figures like 50 Cent and YouTuber Storm Monroe, highlights the blend of schadenfreude, speculation, and genuine concern that characterizes public and insider reactions to celebrity scandals. While 50 Cent's relentless trolling might be seen by some as a distraction from his own issues, it also serves to keep the spotlight on Jay-Z and Diddy, maintaining public interest and speculation about their actions and relationships. The unfolding drama, with its mix of legal actions, public denials, and insider gossip, paints a picture of an entertainment industry at a potential turning point, where long-standing behaviors and secrets are increasingly coming under scrutiny. The intertwining scandals and public disputes involving 50 Cent, Jay-Z, and Diddy reveal a complex web of personal and professional relationships fraught with controversy. The recent allegations involving Daphne Joy and the updated lawsuit against Diddy, which named Joy among others, have dragged 50 Cent into the fray, exposing him to scrutiny and criticism. 50 Cent's mocking response to the revelations about Joy and his subsequent legal actions regarding the custody of his son highlight the acrimonious nature of their relationship. Joy's forceful rebuttal on social media, accusing 50 Cent of serious personal misconduct, adds another layer of drama and contention, illustrating the deeply personal and public nature of these disputes. But that While Mohawk gotta Cent go. has been vocal about the controversies surrounding <laughs> I cut that shit off. Joy's accusations against him suggest that he too may be embroiled in similar issues of conduct and character. Her reference to the traumatic experiences of Diddy's children during the raid and her condemnation of 50 Cent's alleged actions underscore the broader implications and personal costs of these celebrity conflicts. This tangled scenario, with its mix of legal allegations, public feuds, and social media battles, reflects the volatile and often public nature of disputes within the entertainment industry, where personal lives, professional relationships, and public perceptions are inextricably linked. As these stories continue to unfold, they shed light on the complexities of celebrity life and the challenges of navigating fame, power, and accountability. The backlash against 50 Cent for his comments about Daphne Joy and their child illustrates the delicate balance between public persona and private behavior, especially when controversial statements are made publicly. The criticism he faced for his harsh words and the speculation that he might be deflecting from his own issues by focusing on Diddy and Jay-Z suggests that public figures are often under intense scrutiny for both their actions and their motivations. The principle of innocent until proven guilty is a key point of contention, with 50 Cent facing criticism for attacking Joy based on unproven allegations. This situation mirrors the broader legal and public relations battles playing out in the entertainment industry, where accusations and insinuations can quickly lead to public judgment and social media backlash. The speculation about 50 Cent's intentions and potential secrets, along with the public's reaction to his actions, reflects the complex dynamics of celebrity culture, where personal disputes and professional rivalries often intersect and play out in the court of public opinion. Regarding Jay-Z, the silence and lack of support for Diddy have led to various theories about his reasons for staying out of the spotlight, with some suggesting he might be trying to protect himself from potential fallout or scrutiny. The discussions and rumors surrounding these figures highlight the ongoing public fascination with and skepticism of celebrity actions and relationships, underscoring the challenges of maintaining privacy and reputation in the public eye. We're about to see something this on is the level wow. of Epstein, Weinstein, to the power of ten. From members of the royal family to Grammy and Academy Award winners, we're breaking down all the A-list celebrities named in court docs against P. Diddy, along with some startling accusations. I mean, first of all, that, that entire filing was just gasp. I'm not seeing a scenario where he can escape liability, criminal liability. 
He's been known for years as a renowned rapper, producer, and label executive who goes by the names. Damn, Daddy, you know you fucked up when the line crime got the shit on, on blast. No stranger to legal troubles. Just this week, both Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security. According to former prosecutor Melba Pearson, they're likely looking for some specific evidence. The feds are doing raids at three different homes of P. Diddy, including his homes in California, in Florida, and in New York. And what I think they're looking for are videos. So basically, well, trying to take people out. P. Diddy had a habit allegedly based on told to us through the filings by uh, Cassie Ventura. They have all said that he had the habit of liking to video either him abusing other people or in, you know forcing other people to abuse each other for his pleasure and I would record all of that. So I think those are some of the things that the feds are looking for. I think they're looking for other types of evidence to corroborate the statements that were made by Little Rod, by Cassie Ventura, and the other people have come forward saying that he did abuse them. So they're looking for corroborating evidence and the basically the building blocks to put together what will end up being a massive, massive, massive criminal case. So far, Diddy hasn't been arrested, but he has already faced his fair share of legal issues. Last year, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, who you probably know as singer Cassie, accused him of sex trafficking and sexual slavery. She alleged that Diddy Man. raped her and beat her so she severely took a 35 she million dollar Cassie fucking plea deal. Diddy made her have sex still with working with 12 and recorded it on video. She also says he forced her to carry a gun. Cassie sued him under New York's Adult Survivors Act and settled with Diddy outside of court just one day after the suit was filed. Joy Dickerson Neal also filed suit against Diddy under the Adult Survivors Act, accusing him of drugging and sexually assaulting her back in 1991 when she was a college student at Syracuse University. Diddy was slammed with yet another lawsuit last month this time brought on by music producer Rodney Jones, also yeah. known as Lil Rod. The 73-page lawsuit lays out dozens of allegations against Diddy, including that he forced Lil Rod to hire prostitutes and have sex with them. The court docs also claims Diddy himself assaulted Lil Rod, but that's not the only bombshell allegations revealed in the detailed documents. Lil Rod doesn't shy away from publicly naming other celebrities he says assaulted him. I don't know that Cuba Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one. Let's start with the allegations against Academy Award winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Lil Rod alleged that's radio. He was, quote, grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. when they were on Mr. Combs's yacht. What? There's actually photos of their interaction together too which are laid out in those court documents in the first pick you see diddy and kuba talking with diddy's arms on kuba's in the next pick kuba has his arm around little rod and <laughs> court docs go on to state quote kuba gooding jr began touching groping and fondling mr jones's legs his inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. In the last couple of years, there were allegations against him for sexual assault. Damn. So now we have those prior allegations, and now we see him tied to this case as allegedly uh, trying to, you know, uh, assault a little bud, assault others back in 2019 kuba was booked on misdemeanor charges of forcible touching and sexual abuse after he allegedly groped a woman in times square this is bad the next i'm year, not gonna count because if, if the law of crime got this shit nigga consensual sexual touching yeah, he but eventually reached a deal with prosecutors Pete, that required six Puff, months of counseling he still got no the, the tapes i don't think they took all the damn tapes what's up guys I, I That'd be stupid if I have your taste in one area. Smoke, there's fire, My taste right? would have been overseen. Now you have two different some shit. where you're accused of the same type of behavior, you know, years apart. I, I think there's something. I ain't no damn way in hell I keep all the taste with, know with, at my crib. Nigga, I'm putting that somewhere they can't find that it. One because you already saw definitely people moving away from him within Hollywood circles and other circles once those first sexual assault allegations came out. So at this point, I don't think he's going to get get away with it a second time. Is it possible that 
he could face charges based on these allegations that were brought forward by Lil Rod? It is possible as well. Um, again, we've got the statute of limitations issue to deal with. So depending on the time frame of when this happened is, you know, again, the Adult Survivors Act, which was the vehicle where many of these lawsuits came out, many of these civil law school suits, excuse me, came out. There, there was a finite amount of time for those suits to be filed. The time frame is going to be very, very important. Uh, what witnesses come forward, because again, you know, this this may not be a situation where DNA be, may be at play. This may be more of a situation of, hey, yes, I was there and I re- recall, you know, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, putting his hands on the little rod or I, re- you know, recall certain aspects. So it's going to be a very Who witness that damn type of case. And the question is, will the witnesses be willing to come forward? Lil Rod's lawsuit also publicly named another celebrity linked to Diddy. Jennifer Lopez. From the the standpoint of the the names of the celebrities that were tied to this, the fact that Jennifer Lopez was tied to this back when she was involved in a or party to a shooting oh. at a nightclub when she was dating Diddy, and is now alleged to have brought the gun with with her to the scene and gave it to Diddy, and that's how the shooting occurred. What? Lil Rod's team brings up J Lo when establishing Diddy's history writing his quote rico enterprise has existed for at least 20 years dating back to the 1999 nightclub shooting in nyc when mr combs required his then girlfriend jennifer lopez to transport his illegal firearm into the nyc nightclub the court docs allege diddy forced his then artist shine to assume responsibility for the shooting of several individuals all this happened back on december 27 1999 when a fight broke out at a nightclub Diddy, J-Lo, and rapper Shine were all there, and according to former rapper Mark Curry, Diddy paid Shine $1 million to take the fall for the shooting and serve a 10-year prison sentence. Lil Rod's lawsuit now suggests it was J-Lo who brought the gun. The fact that she is named as somebody who was carrying a weapon, could that be incriminating for Jennifer Lopez? It can be, um, but with a, with a huge caveat, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, that shooting did not result in a death. I know that someone who was harmed, but I don't believe anyone was killed. Because of that, you have the statute of limitations to deal with, which is basically a prolonged amount of t- uh, a certain amount of time that a prosecutor has to be able to bring charges against someone. And it, it varies from state to state. But the one thing is consistent is that there is no statute of limitations on murder. So if P. Diddy had actually killed this person or the person died as a result of their injuries, now J-Lo could be brought into the mix as a co-defendant because of the fact that the person has passed away. But if the person is alive and maybe they had serious injuries or whatever the case may be, statute of limitations would run. And it is highly likely at this juncture that statute of limitations have expired Therefore, she does not have any criminal liability. But the reputational damage might be a different story because now she's branding herself as something very different than who she was back then. Back then, she was very much I'm Jenny from the block. She was you know, dating a variety of hip hop artists. She was very much in that world. Now she's married to Ben Affleck. She's trying to you know, portray herself in a different manner. So now her past is going to come back to haunt her. And we don't know what that's going to mean for her future in terms of movie deals, music deals, or anything like that. I mean, she so already loaded. She rich as fuck. Rich. So, I mean, it, unless she just wants accolades and extra more money on it. Pearson it. says it's possible Jennifer Lopez could file some sort of defamation suit, but it's not likely. She could, but at the end of the day, when it comes to defamation and those types of cases, truth is an absolute defense. So if he has some sort of receipts to basically prove that, hey, I I was right there. I saw her the same way in the filings. You saw a number of different screenshots and pictures that he submitted to support the different points that he was making. If he has some pictures to substantiate that she was carrying the gun, it's going to be very hard for her to say in good conscience in a court of law that, you know, this wasn't true. He's made this up. And now as a result, I've lost, you know, money, I've lost opportunities and things like that. There's going to be too much evidence out there connecting her to this that is going to be very hard for a jury to come back and say, yeah, he's making all of this up. 
But it's not just artists that Lil Rod named either. He specifically mentioned Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, in his court documents. It reads in part, quote, Damn. Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs' sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. Why even name Prince Harry? There's no allegations against him or anything, but why bring him up? I think it may have been a move to bring more credibility to the filing and say that, you know, basically he was using, he being Diddy, was using his fame, fortune, and influence to insulate himself. So he was able to legitimize some of the activities he was doing by having these lavish parties. Diddy a smart man. A-list celebrities, but somewhere in a back room or Diddy somewhere smart, in, in smart another man. wing, you know, horrible things were happening. So the fact that Prince Harry was there does not necessarily mean he was participating in what was happening. And just because you are at a party doesn't mean you know what's happening in every inch of the house. I mean, if you think about it. If the party's being thrown in a mansion, there are various floors and wings. So it is completely possible that he was there and did not participate. Now, you had said Prince Andrew, especially as a result of the allegations that came out in connection with the Epstein case, that they were close and that they traveled together. And, you know, there was a person that alleged that he had um, had sexually assaulted her while she was underage. That would be a different story. But Prince Harry and the way that it was mentioned seemed to be very again just sort of trying to bring legitimacy and talk about these were the people that he that did he surrounded himself by to protect himself so prince harry has no formal accusations against him but the name association could cause damage to his reputation even so, Pearson says it's not likely he files any sort of defamation suit. It's possible that Prince Harry may be able to preserve his reputation. But again, just in light of everything him and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, have been through, I, I truly really hope that, you know, he's able to completely distance himself, maybe make a statement, because again, since he's not necessarily under the... Uh, umbrella of the royal family directly that so in other words buckingham palace would not be releasing a statement on his behalf it would be him releasing a statement and saying yes i went to x party but no i never engaged in any inappropriate behavior or other details if, if i was that, that motherfucker i want to say a word what are you talking about um Nigga. so that's going to be you know we're gonna have to wait and see on that one but again since it was such a minuscule mention in the con greater context of this filing, he may be okay. Pearson compares Prince Harry's association with that of President Bill Clinton, who'd been seen with Jeffrey Epstein before his arrest. And there didn't seem Get to on be the much Epstein, people said the Jeffrey Epstein him Island. actually oh, engaging in activities, more that he was present at the parties. So I don't recall seeing a lot of fallout uh, on the part of President Clinton from that association. Speaking of Epstein, Lil Rod's court docs draw a parallel between Diddy's alleged crimes and Jeffrey Epstein's. Epstein died by suicide back in 2019 when he faced numerous charges of sexual assault over the course of multiple years. His longtime companion, Ghislaine Maxwell, was charged and found guilty of sex trafficking in relation to her time with Epstein. She's currently serving out a lengthy prison sentence. Lil Rod compares Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Cahorum, to Ghislaine Maxwell, saying she ordered sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs and ordered and distributed ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in L.A., NYC, and Miami. If it wasn't for the fucking man... It'd be a regular party. When you have these high-profile people that have been using people over years. These cases happen without a handler. R. Kelly had a handler. You know, uh, Epstein had a handler. Weinstein had, had had a handler. Everybody has in those scenarios of those powerful people, powerful men that are abusing other people. They have someone that does their dirty work. 
And it's usually not only just one person, it's several people who may have different duties. So again, you know, seeing this this woman being his handler, being the person to get him drugs, being the person to, to uh, procure sex workers for him, being the person to basically be on cleanup duty in case of, you know, covering up or silencing people that might want to come forward, you know, that that that's not unusual and she is also going to bear the brunt of criminal liability just like Jillian Maxwell did and basically had to take the entire brunt of the criminal justice system alone because of the fact that you know um Epstein committed suicide and was not able to be held accountable. According to Pearson, Diddy and many Mm. of his associates will likely face federal charges, but it's not totally clear when. And what do you think a timetable would look like for all of that? I know that there's a lot of evidence to gather over many years, but is it possible that a federal indictment could be just around the corner? I would hesitate to say just around the corner because with all of the experience I've had with office approaches cases they do not move until they have you fully like they have you dead to rights basically so they are going to take their time they're going to collect all the evidence they're going to speak to as many witnesses as they can they're going to follow every single trail every man did he that they can before they go damn to nigga she went to Antarctica in that bitch a lot when, somewhere that can delay the case but once you file that charging document, the clock starts ticking. So that, you know, when I was a prosecutor, I always advised my detectives, anybody that I was training, that you get all the evidence you can up front, and then you file charges. So when is it possible that we would actually see him being arrested or facing any of these indictments? Could it be months down the line? I feel that it would be months down the line. I, I would not be surprised if it was before the end of this year. Because, um, again, this is going to be Damn. a massive investigation involving at least three states, much as we saw in the uh, in the Epstein case, where he was bringing underage girls to uh, one of his islands in the Caribbean. And there have been some allegations of things happening on planes, things happening on trips. So there may be additional locations that may need to be searched and additional witnesses that may need need to be spoken to in order to get a full picture for what charges would be appropriate and what would be the best path forward with this case. And it's possible Diddy serves a lengthy prison sentence for all this if he were to be convicted in criminal court. If this does happen, that P. Diddy is indicted. I know in our case, it's a large sentence for him. What could P. Diddy be facing if he is convicted of eventual indictments? Yeah, well, it all depends on what charges are brought and how many counts of each charge is brought, right? Because for each uh, for, for each charge, it's usually one victim or survivor attached to that charge. So if, he, if, if the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office is able to pull together 15 survivors, right, and they're willing to come forward and testify, you may see 15 counts. So the question will be, if he's convicted, will all those counts run concurrently, meaning at the same time, or would they all be consecutive? And if it's consecutive, he could be looking at, at life plus, right? Um, if they're run concurrently, again, depending on, on the universe mm. of what is charged, you know, he, he's going to be looking at a prison sentence of convicted. Next thing you need to do, get these fucking crooked ass governors and centers out the fucking paint, nigga. Get these crooked ass centers and, and government out the paint, nigga, next. No if you get all our people out the way. Time? Not get all our fucking money out of Ukraine, nigga. What the fuck you doing? But I, I don't see that happening. I see him kind of going corrupted to ass government. Mark Kelly, where again, for so many decades, he was able to act with impunity and just, you know, with harming so many, uh, you know, young women. But eventually he had to pay the piper and eventually he ended up with the prison sentence. So I that in this juncture from what's been publicly available from reading Little Rod's Filing from re- and reading and hearing about the horrible things that Cassie Ventura endured during her nearly a decade relationship with him that started when she was a young woman, I, 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 I'm not seeing a scenario where he can escape liability, criminal liability. I'm, I'm just not seeing it. It's possible, but I'm not seeing it.
In a statement, Diddy's attorney, Sean Hawley, denies all of Lil Rod's allegations. He writes, quote, his reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Diddy's son, Justin Combs, is also mentioned in the lawsuit. A statement released from him reads in part, quote, Justin Combs categorically denies these absurd allegations. They are all lies. This is a clear example of a desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday. There That's what I be feeling sometimes. Three. For all he doesn't know what's be going on. They just want that bag of money on so that thing. We have not heard a comment from Cuba Gooding Jr. And as of now, P. Diddy has not been arrested and does not face any criminal charges. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie. Because you missed this. Meek Mills. Well, he said a Philly rapper. Do you understand? And it was retracted, redacted in the paperwork to that. Because first of all, it had Meek Mills, it had Stevie J, they had redacted their names, and they had Usher, and they redacted their names and just this said, I'm performer of the Super Bowl and a Philly rapper. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Huh? Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up a lot, Meek Mill got them. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up a lot. Meek Mill got himself subtly named in a lawsuit as a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Now, his appearances in public ain't helping his case out either. Mills, one of the street guys that came out of there, got caught up in this Hollywood sh- This Hollywood sh- where is that he's dressing like, he dressing the same sh- He dressing like Diddy? Hugged up with Diddy? Yeah, that's crazy. I think that Lil Rod know a lot of sh- but I know this. Two men dress alike? Yeah. It's just like two men laying down. Fruity. When they both get up, <laughs> they both homo. <laughs> And that's real talk, bro. Damn. My man, you come to a, you go to a party, dog, and a nigga got the same shirt you got on, I'm taking my shirt off. Damn. I'm walking around in a t-shirt. And then, not to blow Meek Mills up out the water or anything like that, it was said that they checked his Google search and all the other shit. And he was searching for some online gay porn and all that. Wait, shit what like the that. fuck? Oh wow, that shit is crazy, bro. But listen, those are those are what you know. It's crazy that money, that lifestyle, it fuck you up, and you trying to fit into something. Get you. And fuck you up. These guys yeah, never set you out up, to throw do you all away, this shit. You out. Meek Mills, when he got into the game, he didn't set out to be uh, uh, questioning about his manhood with Diddy. But he put that self, himself in that position. Now, in a desperate bid to defend himself, he started ranting <laughs> on Twitter with lots of tweets. But ain't none of them denying his involvement with Diddy. So DJ Academics came for him. Now, he just couldn't stop talking. The accusations really hit the man hard, and Academics didn't take his leg off his neck either. This is a now, wild, clip nigga. also resurfaced to Diddy calling him daddy, telling him how he deserves it and putting in the work while recording a visibly awkward Meek Mill. Yeah, that was wild. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. Like he had a long day. Yeah, the dude looked 
looks sore and uncomfortable yeah, he when does. he's out here claiming the accusations are confusing his son. Now, even though he doesn't believe any of them against Diddy. They had a recording of Meek and Diddy making love? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it was love. Man, okay, that's you have wow. it. That's make wild. it so badly you get these vulnerable people parents are letting you do this because they want to make it so badly yeah. and then you record them probably and say if you do anything we got this on you i don't, I don't know man i'm gonna yeah. bleach my ears after that talk about uncomfortable what the hell was that record made for anyway blackmail i smoke it like I smoke and I have my own weed, but like every man in the room, look, yes, I put my ear to the door and I brought the phone because Diddy started going in overdrive. I ain't no, but I just heard balls slapping against his cheeks. I heard wow. him struggling to take. I heard him being like, yeah, daddy, daddy. When, when I when, when he started calling, all that daddy this and daddy that, and then I heard some hollering and struggling. Like, yeah, I kept the phone there and I recorded all that shit because I was like. This did he. And the way Diddy turned around that fast, he was probably wow. about him. I've never in my entire life seen a straight man move his neck and snap his fast fingers that. like that. I'm just saying. Niggas do anything for 50 mil. Our family, our sons, whatever they taught us in the streets. We grew up looking up the niggas. I looked up the niggas like Puff, but y'all was on TV. I was so far gone. We grew up looking up to niggas on the corner that was on the corner for two. Did he call him in daddy? How the hell did he call Meat Mills daddy? Oh, that came into your mind. Why did Diddy change him name from Puff Daddy to Diddy? Because he didn't want to have no Puff. He just want to sound like daddy, right? So he changed his name to Diddy. But when he's in the bed, you know you gotta call him daddy. That's the mindset I believe that nigga has. Damn. He's crazy. You know? That man is crazy, you know. He's crazy. He's not so right at in his brain. His brain got replaced, man. Man is sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. But Meat Mills, man. You look really, really zesty, bro. It's like a lot of shit that you hear in the past about Meat Mills. It was like, oh, they just shooting shot at Meat Mills. But when you listen it now, it's like, damn, Meat Mills really was off, man. He was off and you felt like shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's perspective, man. Like, when you start to aware of certain things is like you start to see things for what it is but when you do not have the awareness you know the awareness of certain things is like you ain't seen it man but meat mills man damn brother i'm still hoping that man i hope you can redeem yourself man because it's getting a little bit too late, my brother. The, uh, it's, they started circulating. One of the allegations was that Diddy had sex with a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Immediately, what people identified the fuck, man. Um, who else dated Nicki Minaj? The little Uzi Burke? I would thought little Uzi Burke was the, the, the way, nigga they talking this, about. This stuff got him steaming, y'all. He, um... Meek also claimed that the rumor was sparked to shift focus from his new music. And I didn't know that he had a new EP coming out called Heathenism. So, vagina don't control what... Now, I can't say the word, but you, you know can I... You say vagina? say vagina. No, I know, but his... I can't say his word. No, you can't say that yeah, word. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Y'all be so scared. Y'all be so scared. Yeah, we so scared. <laughs> all right, all right, don't be scared. All right, um, vagina don't control me, but it's like a high. One love to the gay people, but that juicy vagina do it for me. See these rappers <laughs> and styles. They want that Leave that to them. I come from that gangster ass surviving in the jungle. 
That's a lot of games that survive in the jungle, too. Meek, stop explaining yourself to people. Yeah, he you don't, don't have to convince yeah. nobody, man. Yeah. He said, now y'all want to see how bad they want to stop you when you drop independent music. That's going to get played regardless and make millions. Meek got music God, coming out tomorrow. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. That's what you want to hear. Listen to music. Nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. Yeah, as far true. as the internet is concerned, that is just good content to create content, memes yeah. and get jokes yes. off. And other diddler news. Uh, Columbus Short <laughs> accuses Diddy of trying to groom him. Um, and <laughs> Columbus Short uh, recently did an interview with Buzz Talk 101 podcast, and he had a couple things to say about um, Diddy grooming him. So about 2 something 30 in the morning, 2 15, 2 31, phone rings and put it on speaker. I, I, I said, Who is this? It's Sean. I'm like, Sean, it's Puff. I'm like, so I was like, Hey, what's good? I said, What's crying? He said, ah, We didn't see you, we didn't see you tonight at the BET Awards. He said, what, 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 you, what you doing? I was like, Oh man, I'm at the crib. He said, I'm over here at the, um, the Beverly Hills Hotel. I said, Oh, for real? So who over there? Just me. Sad that so many talented artists. More that I've ever spoke up. There, there's more quiet than there are talking. To have to have these gifts and to, you know, meet your people that you've looked up to or mm-hmm. like, oh, that are saying they are, you know, we can start with R. Kelly. You know, like, that's a that's a that's a predator's device. Oh, I'm going to give you a shot. Um, hit maker. Oh, well, what you got? Sorry. No, go ahead. Hit maker says Diddy tried to stop, sabotage his uh, career. He um he had some things to say. So Puff hit me. He like, yo, I'm doing an R&B album. I need you, you know, you the guy, you know, it's going to be London on the track, you and me, and I think that we should do everything together, blah, blah, blah. I sent him a 10 clip, and he was like, he hit me back like, man, it feel like, like, I want, I want that, I want that bird, I'm like, stop trying to be me, like, it sound like you trying to do what I do, so I didn't send him nothing, right? I was like, F- it. next thing I know, the n- reached out. He had, they deciphered my records and reached out to everybody that I collaborated with and dissected me from the situation. Next thing I know, I'm executive producing French Montana album. Why this all happening? The n- had an album, the intro of the album, my tag was on it. He took my tag out of it, screamed at the intro, did all the sh- or whatever. And I was like, damn, this n- is really diabolical. Whatever is going on yeah. in this industry and in this business will be exposed. Well, let me ask you a question, Charlamagne. You, you've been in this industry for a while, and, and, and the other day you said, you know, you were given. Has anybody ever tried to highlight you? I yeah. know you're not talking. No, he just asked a question. I, uh, but I what? know you're not talking. I just asked I you a question. I don't even understand why he would even just come out with that energy. Has that what happened? What would I know? What, what do you know? Oh, you know? <laughs> what y'all know? What do you know? <laughs> Let's go nuke for nuke. Let's go. I know that's right. Let's go nuke for nuke. Uh-uh, 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 yeah. You drop- so 50 Cent claims people believe Meek Mill in his alleged freak-off party tapes. Apparently, he also requested the meme of the elevator scene from Juice with his face. Now, he's the butt of the jokes right now. <laughs> no pun intended. I bet. So yeah, man. So you see in that situation, man. Hey, man. Say, man. This could go on for a long ass time. You know what I'm saying? This Diddy situation about what's going on in the music industry and all the celebrities that's been allegedly claiming that Diddy did this. He done had this person, that person, all these type of people coming in this, this into this allegations of you know what I'm saying? Um, this sex off. Freak off, you know what I'm saying? Like, I say that the, the sex shit is not the worst thing that's going on. I think that everybody is stressed out about is the, 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 the I think the allegation of that they were raping niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's a different when niggas want to have sex, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people up in that bitch, you know what I'm saying, just want to have sex. They, yeah, you don't have drugs at a party, that's a party, you know what I'm saying? You got drugs. But as soon as you trying to like put like roofies, you trying to put like roofies and all types of like 
drugs and knock niggas out and then you got like video sex tapes of niggas fucking niggas and they fucking trans and they fucking little kids. I think that's what, what got niggas like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, because a lot of people was important people. And he got evidence on like a lot of motherfucking people. Are them niggas doing gay shit, freaky shit, pedophiles, all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? And you know, once a nigga, once a black man got that much power over an organization or a group of people that's that's really powerful, they they gonna try to take that nigga out, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Because they get, they, you know, people get tired of having black male over their head. You know what I'm saying? You can't arrest the nigga. You can't do nothing because, you know what I'm saying? He, he, the governor is, is, is a part of it. The senator is a part of it. The president and all them niggas is a part of shit. The princes and other kingdoms is a part of shit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you know, that's the thing about um the, the black culture, man. They use us, man. You know what I'm saying? They tell you how amazing you are. They tell you how cool you are. They tell you that you, you can do no wrong. You know what I'm saying? They even might try to tip you to doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do. They put like shit in your face to so you get tempted to do it. You know what I'm saying? Then they get you so used to doing it. And you think like, damn, people who, who, are, who are supposed to be against me, they with me. You know what I'm saying? They let me do whatever the fuck I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Until... You start getting more power than they is. You know what I'm saying? Like, Diddy is smart than a bitch. Because I don't think the people was thinking like, damn, is he really going to put cameras in people's rooms to keep niggas, to keep evidence on people who, who trying to put this nigga in trouble? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, they, they get you caught up. They let you do all this freaky ass shit. Let you do everything until they build up a case on you. You know what I'm saying? And once you get out of line, they finna cut that shit down. You know what I'm saying? That's what they. That's what America is known for. You know what I'm saying? America KKK. You know what I'm saying? They just want to find ways to keep niggas in slavery. You know what I'm saying? They build you up just to tear you down. You know what I'm saying? We can't believe nothing Americans have to say about anything these days. You know what I'm saying? We already know that a lot of shit that's in America is, is fraudulent. You know what I'm saying? They be the biggest one. Sex trafficking kids and shit. You know what I'm saying? From other countries. You know what I'm saying? They be the biggest ones. Eating kids and shit. Getting their adrenaline chrome. All type shit. Kidnapping kids. You know what I'm saying? America is like, they governors and the, and the senators are the biggest ones who do it. You know what I'm saying? But then when it comes to the black man coming up with some power, I ain't saying that he, what he did was right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I'm just speaking the truth. You know what I'm saying? They, of course they're going to get Diddy and, and, you, and use him and set him up to try to, you know what I'm saying? Frame him and blame him for the most of the shit that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Then again, then I can't stand Cassidy. Cause it's like, damn Cassidy, if you're gonna do a lawsuit, you're gonna take the 30 million? You just make it seem like, okay, you, you went out here for bullshit. You just want the money on. Which we understand, cause like, damn, you've been in the rap game for so long and you broke as hell. And then nigga made you fuck every nigga, every female, every bitch. And he made you watch him fuck other niggas and shit. So it's like, damn, you know, you got, you know, all his secrets and shit. You're like, damn, and you just spit it out at the end. He got a new bitch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that shit, wow. You make anybody mad. You know what I'm saying? Crip. So like, I understand why she trying to get that bag, but it's like, damn, you just messed up everybody else. Who, you know what I'm saying? But. I feel like, man, Diddy might, he might beat this case, man. Like, I heard a thing that he was going to sue these niggas for, for uh, everything that went on. Man, they raided his cribs. He had three cribs. They raided all three of them, nigga. If I was Diddy, nigga, it's on some real shit. On Crip, nigga, on some real nigga shit. I would have hit all them fucking, I would have had copies after copies after copies after copies of every evidence I had. And I would have put that shit in like a secret vault in a different country or somewhere else, nigga. You would have had to find that shit, nigga. And you thought you would have got that nigga up. Nigga, I would have had all that shit. Nigga, send my ass to prison, nigga. Then, and when they send a nigga to prison, I'm going to release everything and everything that I've done on the internet. And they can't even stop the shit, nigga. That's how I would have did it. You know what I'm saying? I would have created, I would have created my own website where they couldn't take it down. I would have created my own website. And I would have posted every fucking video on like a porn site shit. And posted everything what they did on that, on that, on that, on that website. It's for everybody to see, you know what I'm saying, if, that, if some shit happened. You know what I'm saying, on some real shit, nigga, like, and leave out the evidence of the, uh, everything that's been going on, nigga. Hey, and, and if you trying to take me down, and you know what you done done, and you was part of people trying to take a nigga down, oh, yeah, you can put on that, you can, you can, you, you can put on Front Street 3, nigga, ain't no damn way you think you can take me down, and, and y'all part of the situation 3, you know what I'm saying, but, 
You know, Diddy Smart, man, you know, uh, to be alive, to be 50 something years old, still on top of the game, got billions of dollars, and he just got released from jail after all this goofy ass shit. That shit, wow, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just hope everything go good. Cause I see that his son might be in some goofy ass shit next. They talking about his son is in some inner rape allegations, man. This shit is getting out of hand. And hey, you know, you just gotta break through this shit, man. You know, they 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 hitting, man. They trying to take motherfuckers out, and we just gotta see what's going on, man. And it's not like, but like I said, at the end of the day, Diddy can't get these niggas ammo and take them out. So it's like. We only can do so much, but at the end of the day, man, we gotta see what's going on. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hood and outside crib. And we out the bitch gang shit. Gang gang. Hey, Dad, you know what I want. We need to talk about this shit. Be legendary. You know this is instrumental. You the engineer on it, so. Hold that everywhere.